What is good? We're back. Week eight is in the books. Crack. Well, just about. We got Big D. We got me. We got Jay Wayne's on the ones and twos. Today, we got the little moves to make for your pleasure. We've got some moving parts here that have happened. So we're going to talk about maybe some uh, some additions and some addition maybe by some su- subtraction here in some uh, in some of these offenses. So we're going to talk a little Bills, a little Browns, a little Bucks. And if there's time, we got a couple bonus things for your pleasure. Well, Big D, what's good? Oh, it's great here in the Pacific Northwest. What's good with you, Mr. CM? Oh, it's, it's wonderful time of year here in the uh, lovely coastal Carolina region. Close to Halloween, like Halloween. Halloween. Charleston, South Carolina, let's go. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Let's start with the Buffalo Bills. They've recently added Amari Cooper. And, you know, we weren't, you're not, we're not sure what the impact's going to be, but I I did want to look at the last two games since the addition of Amari. And he hasn't been there long enough to really say, you know, what his role is going to be per se. And then they're just kind of getting him integrated into that offense, right? So not a whole lot of action this past week as far as fantasy points. But what it has seemed to do over the last two weeks is just kind of open up this offense a little bit more. It gave Keon Coleman, who's a rookie, maybe a little bit more, really this whole offense, possibly a little bit more room to breathe. You went into this offseason or this regular season with, you know, a cast of characters who are, are, you know, mostly unproven, right? I like all the guys, but they're wanting a main character here and especially a veteran really for all these guys to lean on and maybe seek a little guidance from. And now you have that with Amari Cooper and and it has seemed to, for whatever reason, it could just be psychological. It could be absolutely nothing to do with anything, but it seems to have brought the the offense to life a little bit and uh, uh, especially uh, Keon Coleman right now. If we zoom out to four games, right, Keon's wide receiver, 16, 13 points per game. He had 11, 5, then 16 and 18. Uh, But really what I wanted to zoom in on was those last these last two weeks where he's wide receiver seven and he's uh, 17.3 points per game. Right. And these these are when Amari has hit the field with them again, not fully integrated into the offense or anything, but. With with key on here, we've seen a, a nice jump in a lot of statistics. And again, it's two games, so you can't get too excited about it. But thirty four point nine percent air yard share for Keon Coleman here, which is one on the team and in, in, in two weeks, twenty point nine percent target share, which is is number two. His team yardage uh, receiving market share percentage is thirty two point two. That's number one. His yards per route run are three point six eight. That's number one yards per target 13.93 number one yak per reception 11.67 number one fantasy points per reception 0.65 that's good for number one and then on the first read percentage 21.7 that was good for number two and first downs per route run uh, 0.132 that was good for number two with Kincaid there so Keon to me seemingly came to life a little bit and I'm, you know, I'm not going to front and be like Keon was, I loved Keon, my favorite receiver, but you know, what, what did bring him into, you know, wanting to have a little bit of Keon was the situation, right? You're going to a wide open scenario where he can be the man and or turn into the man with a good quarterback uh, in a good system. And we've seen how a number one can grow there. So what have your thoughts, big D been on Keon these last two weeks? I think he's looking good. I mean, I think he's he's starting to play faster and right? he's maturing into the offense. You know, it's 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 around this time I think that we start to see those incremental increases from good re- wide receivers and and coached up wide receivers. And and you are correct with uh, Cooper coming in there. I think it can't hurt him, even though it may hurt him in the short run. Once Cooper gets integrated in the offense, I think in the long run, just having that veteran leadership, knowing how to show up you know, being, being a professional like Cooper has been for many a year now in, uh, in our fantasy world and in the football world. I mean, I, I had Coleman kind of there at that, uh, on our rookie drafts, depending on team need and, and what you were doing, you could go as high as one twelve on the 12 team or, you know, mm-hmm. the top of the fir- top of the second typically was your, yeah. your usual play unless, you know, you really, really were trying to navigate, but, um, 
you know, I think ever since that yellow jacket, man, I've been kind of sold on him uh, <laughs> increasing his value and 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 looking pretty good. So um, yeah, I I I tend to agree. And and you know, we did a, a Patreon this this afternoon and talked a little bit about you know the NFL recap of Week Eight and and Keon kind of growing into in a nice role here, uh, going to be mostly that outside guy. And and I think, like you said, over the last two weeks, I, I think you saw. You know, and again, it could be just a coincidence, but I thought you saw a, a nice little role being carved out for him and liking the the movement and the action and, and how they were using Keon Coleman. Uh, all were very, very positive uh, in my mind. And, and, you know, when you were getting into that super flex tight end premium mid second and Keon was still hanging around, you were excited to grab him. But, you know, oh, yeah. I was a little reluctant to grab him at that two one two 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 three spot. But, you know, it. it it was it was the landing spot that really made me go. All right, well, I can I can stomach this, and it's it's worth the risk because there were some red flags with Keon, but there were also some really fun uh, markers there with Keon Coleman as well. It just wasn't you know necessarily a sure thing as as some of the other things, but but you know those that can really pay off for you. So basically, you know, right now we've had we've had a nice run of Keon over the last four weeks, especially the last two, uh, and I, I really wanted to just check out the value of. Keon Coleman here to see if you know there's been a great groundswell for Keon Coleman or if there's if it's kind of a, a hold or if you're buying so you know as, as per usual we'll probably scoot on over to Dynasty Daddy there and look at some of these so Dynasty first one Daddy. I see off the, off the rip is is two quarterback uh, tight end premium half point second round pick for Keon so that's basically somebody just maybe like you and I that just wanted to get their money back. Now, see, I'm, I'm right. trending in the opposite direction. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going, Hey, I would, I would want probably two twos at this point. Right. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta be, uh, I, don't, yeah, I don't, I mean, I'm not cashing out for what I paid for them, you know? Right. Like, yeah. I don't think, I don't think you want to reroll. I'm not ready to just be like, Oh yeah, I've, I don't, I, I want to reroll Keon Coleman at this right. point. Right. And into, into something else. I, I'm no, I've I'm seen ready enough to, where I'm like, go on I'm, this adventure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to first at least. And then I'm right. My just old. Yeah, so there's Keon and a third for T. Higgins. How do you feel about that, Big D? I think I would go Higgins there just because yeah. of the just because of the value. Go Tigers. I think the value that Higgins is going to produce once he finds his new home. <laughs> I don't think he's going to end up with the Bengals by the end of the. I mean, he may be there by the end. You know, by the end of the trade deadline, which is this coming weekend. But uh, I don't think he's going to be there next year. I'm. I'm I'm leaning that way anyways. I'm leaning that direction. And so, I don't know. I mean, I think you kind of want, you know, when Higgins is on, you kind of want, that's what you want Coleman to turn into. So that's why I kind of lean Higgins there. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good, I think I, I'm, I'm with you there. Uh, this one's Will Disley and Reed for Keon Coleman and Tyler Conklin. So basically Reed for Coleman there. I don't read too much into the Conklin and Disley part of that. It's, there's no what? tight end premium on there that makes it, <laughs> any uh yeah anything crazy there so I, I i would love that trade to get Jaden the Jaden reed side for me yeah i wouldn't mind you're, that either you're uh, that's it. like a, a nice little fishing lure yeah so it looks like there's you know maybe maybe a little bit of value on keon's name here keon coleman and etn for chris olave i i think etn is on his way out in jacksonville that's kind of my my take we uh, do have a fifth year option he's there they do, and he, and he may be, but just looking at the 2025 class and what what's going on, I have a feeling that he may 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 move. I, I really like Olave, but I'm not a huge Derek Carr fan, and uh, and the time is going to be a little. We're 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 going to take a little bit more time to get really flush out that New Orleans offense, and with uh, Grumpy Dude, <laughs> I was thinking of a different word, Dennis Allen, say, Dennis Allen, yeah. With him there, I you know I, I don't know Olave still. Um, I I don't mind buying him, but I think the the value side for me would be Coleman and Etienne. I think I'd have to take the Olave side there. I I don't, but I don't want to. I don't want to give up Travis ETN just, right it now. Feels it's like a bad time to trade ET. on ET. ETN right, right. there. Right. You don't right. want to add ET to Keon Coleman. If you want to get Keon Coleman and turn him into Olave, I'm fine with that. But don't use someone whose value is down like right. right now. You know, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Hey, guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. We can get off this offense and keep moving. I did want to take a quick look at uh, Shakir because he, I, I feel Shakir. I've been a big fan of his. He had a couple down games there and was was injured. But man, he, he's been... He had a zero, dude. What, right. 
how could he be any but good? I thought he I thought he had a nice performance in this last game. Uh, and then the three point nine, but every other game besides that, solid, solid, wide solid wide receiver. And, and to me, uh, th- this is like my quintessential. Like I'm okay with a two for this guy if I could pull off a second round pick to get a guy like Shakir on my team. And I know some people would say, ah, I don't want to do that. And it's like, I just feel like this is a just just a rock solid start that I'm not that worried about week in, week out. And, you know, Amari might not be there long term, but I think this is great for this team to kind of build into Keon takes over and then Khalil could be the, the two and, and run that slot. He's combined Khalil and Shakir together. Khalil, I like it. Khalil. Hit us in the yeah. comments with the salt. It's crazy you can get both Keon Coleman and Shakir for a two. Like, yeah, I don't or. know if that you can. Well, this well, there's trades. There's it, one for a two, right? There was there. definitely there Coleman trades uh, for there's, a two. There's Khalil for another two. So there's those are all today. So a four, three, and three for for Shakir. Straight yeah. up two kind of sounds expensive, especially if it's super flex and it's anywhere in mid to early. Uh, I just I like the player. I like the player coming out of Boise State. It took a minute, and he was kind of coming on at the end of last year. And I just I feel like there's even more room for him to continue ascending up in this offense and really having a great role kind of moving forward you know he was he was good without cooper and then this game this this past game i think was really good so maybe a two might be a little expensive but I, i'm okay with that like i'm i'm okay with guys that, that can give me a pretty solid floor and i think the ceiling hasn't been even tapped into quite yet yeah i think you might put your hand up on your hip because i think there's going to be a little dip coming up when you dip uh, out yeah coopers uh in in here but i i agree i think by the end of the season uh going into next season he'll probably be about a two value uh, so I, I don't hate it at all. Is Kincaid the one who's values down the most out I mean, of all Kincaid, this? Like, Kincaid's been having a, an okay last couple of games here, so I don't I don't think so. How many know? guys can Josh Allen support? I mean, enough. I mean, what it seems like the the fundamentals of this offense over the last two weeks have kind of changed. You know, Cook got back in the swing of things out of injury, and this is just a good. Obviously, they they beat up on on sorry Big D on the Seahawks yeah. Yeah, a little that's bit right. there. Um, we talked about it in the in the. Um, Pleasure and the chest. pleasure chest. Just most Jekyll and Hyde team right now might be the Seahawks. One week they mm-hmm. look they look really really solid. Next week not great. And then this, uh, to not look great at home is is always a always a bummer. So uh, let's keep it. Yeah, I mean here. it's a rebuild, but uh, you know, and people don't like to hear that, but it's a rebuild in Seattle, and they're they're learning. They're they're going through it. They just have a good talent. But I mean, I, yeah. I think from um, Buffalo standpoint, it was it was great to see them get off the schneid and yeah. get, you know get some points and get Love you know schneid. get Josh Allen uh, rolling a little bit and. You saw those playmakers, and you know they have the ability. I, I, Seattle was down, but their defense wasn't horrible. It was, uh, it looked horrible by the end of it, but you know they they were pretty competitive, and they were still able to move the ball. So I, yeah. I think it's I think it's a good positive sign for Buffalo, and I and I wholeheartedly agree with you. Doing a little fishing in the in the in the ice fishing in, in Buffalo is not a bad idea right now to see what values are like. You like the Schneid? You like being Love, on the Schneid? I just like the the Schneid, the Schneid <laughs> word. I don't. You, nobody wants to be on the Schneid, but hey, yeah, yeah I don't nobody know wants Schneid to is. get on the Schneid here. Huh? Hit us up yeah. in the comments. What's what's the Schneid? Should Why are you not supposed to be on you, it? Do you want to be? <laughs> You got to bleep out the schneid. I don't know, but yeah, no, I love the. Yeah, schneid. I mean, you don't want to be on the schneid, especially when you're schnockered. But yeah. you know, yeah. All right, let's keep it moving to the Browns. This is uh, Amari departed from here, so Speaking a little bit different. Oh. <laughs> a little bit different of a scenario here, where different schneid, where you, you know, the Browns are trying to get off their own schneid. Yeah, they're, they're the Browns to, are the schneid. W- yeah, they've they've been on the schneid for quite some time. Uh, they moved in. Deshaun goes down. Uh, Q D T R goes and, up. Jameis uh, as, the, as the emergency. Now this week, Jameis gets the start. So we're going to zoom in on the Browns in the last two weeks as well. But this one, you know, we talked about Cedric Tillman in an episode last week. And, boy, did and, we. and boy, did Cedric Tillman come out here and do his thing uh, in the last two games for this Browns offense. He had a 36.8% air yard share, which is number one. His first read percentage was 27.3, which again, uh, really strong target percentage. 22.6. That's tied for first. I believe tied with Joku. Was yep. it Joku? Joku. Okay. His team receiving market share percentage is 29.5%. That's number one. <laughs> Yak per reception, 3.87. That's number one. First down per route run. It's one-ish. It's 0.999. We had one guy just kind of right right ahead of him on first downs per route run, but he might as well have been. Might as well have been first. Close enough. Uh, fantasy points per route run, also uh, number one. So Jordan Atkins was was kind of right above him by like a tenth, hundredth of a point there. So I just I gave that. There's Tillman doing a lot more work 
Uh, so <laughs> gave him the I went with one ish there. But uh, so Tillman kind of, you know, I don't want to say coming out of nowhere, because if if, if you know, you know, as the, as mm-hmm. the kids would say, we, we like Tillman on this pod. And sometimes you have to have patience and we priest patience and sometimes patience will bite you in the butt. But sometimes patience will really bring something to fruition. And, you know, Tillman's a guy who had third round draft capital. He's got the big prototypical outside kind of X receiver. He's 6'3", 215, got after it and his first opportunity there and then did did so again. Perfect, the quintessential Jameson uh, YOLO ball thrower. Yeah. So, you know, Cedric Tillman is, is real interesting because you're getting a midseason big bump right here, right? And, and right. redraft, you know, you're excited to have him. And in Dynasty, you just got somebody you can seemingly plug and play week after week. So it bears the question of, you know, do you capitalize on w- w- which way do you want to row the boat here? Depending on who you are and how you play. Some people are probably screaming sell. Other people are probably screaming buy, hold. I've been holding this guy. You know, I, pr- I probably drafted him anywhere from 3-1 to 3-5 in this last year's draft. He's yep. got decent draft capital. Like I said, he's not like a rando that just came out of nowhere for me. And for a lot of people uh, in 2022 for Tennessee, he had an ankle injury, which kind of kept him. They, they were thinking you were going to get some ascension and that kind of kept him down a little bit. Hyatt right. got got the love. But th- this this was the, this was the OG. This was the G on that squad right there. Comes right in and takes over a spot. And, and you know, I just I just don't see any reason to, to be trading off of this guy right now. This is this is everything. You, this is dynasty in a nutshell for me. This is why I started playing dynasty, right? Guys like Cedric Tillman that I was excited about a year ago and never got any benefit in drafting them in redraft. But once you started playing dynasty, you could get the benefit of drafting somebody like Cedric Tillman. So what's your feelings here on Tillman? Is this a is this a sell for you right away, Big D? Or, or how, how would you like to play that? No, I, I'm kind of with you. I've had Tillman on my on my taxi squad. I think at, at right now it's an activate for me. I think, you know, a couple of things that you mentioned there um, spot on. I would also say that he wasn't running with the ones there while while Watson was around and before Amari uh, got. Yeah, why uh, not? Out. Um, and, and which means he was running with the twos, which means he has a lot of practice time with. Uh, Jameis, uh, Jameis. And so I think there's already some built in chemistry there. He obviously leapfrogged in this last week, um, Jerry, Judy and Elijah Moore uh, just kind of in the pecking order there and, and showed that he can ball out. So for me, it's a it, it's it's definitely a hold. You could probably talk me into selling them, but it'd have to be it'd have to be more than, you know, than a second, I guess. You know, we just talked Which about I'm seeing Shakir. a lot of. So yeah, you just talked about Shakir in a second. I think that I would I would be more comfortable personally volunteering <laughs> Tennessee. Anyway, uh volunteering my <laughs> oh, second uh for Tillman than I would it. for Shakir. Yeah. Real quick before we go on to the the trade value of, of Tillman, this seemed like a, a you know raising all you know tide boats and tides and however that thing goes. Um, skinning cats yeah however, whatever metaphor you want to throw here but judy oh, yeah. seems seems playable uh which we hinted a few times at that may he may be if you needed him with watson uh but but more came in here I, I think more had 12 targets this week but over yeah. the last two weeks uh 17 targets for more and 13 targets for judy and and we knew joku as soon as this this would happen he's right up there with tillman he's going to be a borderline you know, top five, type six tight end week in, week out from here on out. So winner, um, yeah. uh, league winner for sure with with Joku. So he, he made the show last week as well with a little Tillman action. But more, more and Judy, you know, I don't know that every week will be a 41 attempt game from from Jameis there. But all those guys can serve different roles in this offense. And, some, you know, I'm not saying Tillman's going to do the same thing every week. But he does seem like the guy who can get down the field outside and, and, and be targeted. Uh, in that area, gives him the big body. Judy's good route runner. Elijah Moore can move the chains for you as well. And so it'd be interesting to see how that, but it does seem like this has made all fantasy assets a lot more startable in your lineup week after week. If if you need Elijah Moore or Judy in, in a jam with buys and injuries and and maybe, you know, a couple more weeks, you could even link them into some possible trade scenarios with, yeah. you know, as, as to get a deal done. I agree with you. I think, it's going to be wheels up there in, in Cleveland. And it looks like the team is responding to, uh, and, and why wouldn't they? I mean, you hear right. Winston talk. I mean, I definitely would respond to that guy. He's fun. So, 
the team just seemed dejected from the QB play that was going on before. And now you're yeah. getting, you know, you know, Winston had plenty of times where he could have done Winston things and, and the Ravens just dropped them in this game. Uh, so, you know, I don't, I'm not worried about the Ravens necessarily. And, yeah. and Jameis will have some turnovers and, and it won't go this way every single time. What, what's good about him is that he won't, that won't stop him. <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> He'll keep right on. He going. already forgot about <laughs> yeah. it. Uh, but he does. He did get LASIK. So, you know, here here we are. Um, so, Seti Till looks like, like you said, round two, round two, round two. Here's a 26-1. I kind of classify that as as almost a two right yeah. there, you know. Yeah, you, you got a year away. Back, so, I'm, I'm, I agree with you. Um, but, you know, here's a little Ayuk action, a little digs action today. So the dig one, you don't know how injured he is, but I would do that any which way. You know, obviously, if he's injured even more so. But, you know, I'm I'm fine with making that move. And I, I like I said, I don't I don't think this Tillman thing is an accident. I think this is a good player. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, this is Nico Collins type of vibes. I'm not going to go, <gasps> you know, all the way, all the way to 100 on that. But it just feels like comp, like he's got that kind of play in him. And and play style. What's your so, comp? What's your comp? Uh, Nico Collins with a uh, you know uh, Justin Blackman. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> remember Justin Blackman? Yeah, yeah he was I do remember him. last one. Fire for a second. That was a bummer. Like two seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a two and a three for Tillman here. Uh, you know that, that's that's getting why paid. Would sh- why would you throw that kind of shade at your boy Tillman? Like, what? what are they- I, I just was trying to think of some random other person just to like you know hybrid uh that i couldn't think anybody fun. i thought blackman was kind of funny said tillman or ayuk mm. what straight up yeah that's what the ayuk. straight is I, how could you what are you doing you're not taking i mean I'm, I'm taking i'll take ayuk okay. right now yeah okay it's like, Jeez, it's like where are we i can't bail just yet although that's on the next episode Ayuk's, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little ayuk. ayuk's giving yeah, up just chill. more vibes for the next episode <laughs> for sure bro. yeah Addison and Gabe Davis for Cedric Tillman. This yeah. Addison still, right? Christian Kirk and Yoshivas, Yoshivas for Tillman. Give me Tillman. I'll take Tillman there, but yeah. I think I got to stick him Kirk with Addison. Stick bone. with Addison. Yeah, a lot of twos. So I Tillman. Give up the two, especially in one QB. A lot of palatable trades here for me with, with Tillman, and I'll, I'll pay a two for Tillman all day long. Like you said there, Big D, with the, with the Shakir to Tillman thing, I think that's a good yeah. call. Before we get off the Browns, I, I think we're heading that way. I, I just want to say that there was a couple times early in the preseason and then throughout some action that I saw DTR throwing the ball. And, you know, I think Winston's going to have this job locked down. But uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson, the quarterback for the Browns, who's now the backup, he had some interesting, a little bit of interesting play. So he's had, some, he's had some juice here or there. Yeah. So if you're feeling a little wheelie and you want to get a fourth out there and, you know, light it on fire, that might be a, a good place to start your, uh, start your kindling. So get your fourth off the schneid. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's, let's go to a, another offense. This one was a, was a loss from an injury at the end of last week, and everyone was wondering who would take the place of these guys. We're going to go over to Tampa. We're going to take a look at the Bucks offense. We were unsure of who it would be, and now obviously... Uh, Kate Otten got all the targets yeah. vacated by those wide Evans Evans was out, and Godwin is, is definitely out for, for p- probably the season there. Uh, yeah. So we had Jalen McMillan hopefully coming in there and stepping up, which you know didn't, didn't kill you. In your day there, and then, but Kate Otten was, you know, absolutely unreal in this yeah, one. Maybe. I have no concern of starting Otten for the rest of the year for the Bucks here and, and for your fantasy team, but this could be an opportunity to be selling on, on some Kate Otten for you know somebody who's counting on some tight end play that maybe isn't getting it, and they're they're seeing an opportunity here. If anybody's down on Jalen McMillan because he didn't come out and do what Kate Otten did, I'd be pouncing on that. Oh yeah, as maybe. well. Just a ridiculous amount of targets for for Kate Otten in this one. I believe I believe was the number uh, let's see. ten. Is it ten each of the last two weeks? Yeah, so twenty in the last two weeks. Put up uh, 30, 30. I mean, that was tight end premium that I was looking at. Twenty six point three overall. Twenty six point three. Uh, and and you know, again, I think a lot of people were out. Wait, there. that's sorry. Twenty six point three points per game. That's for over the last two weeks for KDOT. Oh, you get that's the last two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Total of, of 40. Uh, yeah. He had a good week the, the week before, and he had been kind of coming on slowly. But yeah, I mean, you've got 29 this last week, 18 before that, nine and a half, 7.4, 11.2, 9.4. So, a so nice from, drink. So from, from week, week three, three on, on been, been playable. So not, not 
I think that's a good selling point for him. Hey, if you want to, if you want to, I'm not saying I'm for sure selling Kate Otten, but you might be able to get somebody to overpay for Kate Otten kind of moving forward. What's your thoughts on, on this Kate Otten pecking order of bucks kind of moving forward? Baker didn't miss a beat. Baker Crazy. was out there playing really well. The bucks jumped on him early or the uh, Falcons rather jumped on him early, but Baker kind of brought them boys back, you know, this backfield. I feel like, now with with potential Evans being out for a minute and and Godwin being out, I feel like White and Bucky are are really each yeah. going to have you know nice opportunities of having really expanded roles here in the passing game and, and the running game uh, for Tampa Bay here. Uh, so Kate Otten, the focal point of the offense. Do you think that continues? Would you try to maybe no. capitalize on this a little bit, or what do you think? This particular game lined up pretty well for a tight end mismatch. And, you know, you had, um, oh, Jesse Bates. Yeah, Jesse Bates, you know, um, out there kind of, you know, covering their their best receiver in the game uh, in, in McMillan. Uh, I might get some hate for that. But but I, I love Jalen McMillan. I had him really high. And so I think for Otten, I think you're, you're you know, tight end is a, is a hellish landscape once you get under those like three or four. So I'm, I don't mind if you want to go out and buy them. I don't think I'm going to sell them unless I have said uh, studly dudes up up above. You know, if I have Kittle or Andrews or Kincaid or Laporta, I you know I'd probably hang on, or I, I I might be willing to to move off of them if I'm a competitor. But for the most part, I don't think I'm going to be selling Otten for a two, and I think that's probably where the price is. Yeah, I mean, looking at these here, it does look like half point tight end premium. So one and a half per reception. Here, here's a 25-2. Here's Kate Otten and Vidal in a three. Kate Otten in a two, a 26-2. A first and a third Kate Otten, full PPR. That's a little wild. I, I got to sell for that point. I kind of like this one here. Half point PPR, Shakir, and a third for Kate Otten. I might, yeah. I might take the uh, Shakir side on that one. I probably would, yeah. Is it just no one wants to give him his due? Like, two I twos like, and a four. I feel like he ought to have more weight. Yeah, I mean, I thought I thought you would see some more big big boy trades going down for Otten, but it really does look like a two right now. So I was I was you know Kate Otten and Worthy for a for a first. I mean, you probably paid a first for Worthy, so worthy. you had to throw Otten in there to get your first back. <laughs> yeah, no way. Yeah, I mean, if somebody's offering me a first for Otten, you know, first and my third back, I'd probably even do, but but I don't think I'm going to just do a second for him and, and tight end premium. If it's non tight end, then yeah, he's he's probably gone for a second for me. But uh, that's just the way I play. Uh, um, and you're the not you're not end. you're not going to pull McMillan out of the lineup next week, right? You're rolling again with him. And oh, I'm rolling. The Bucks aren't on the line, maybe. Week, are they? No, they're playing uh, Casey. Uh, which is going to be a tough game. So yeah, um, but I, I'd still play him in my flex. I mean, if you've got I, I don't know who is on by next week. I haven't looked at that, that, but I know this week we didn't have any buys. And so next week, you know, we're back into the buy train. Um, that sounded weird. We're back into the buy, uh, you know, buy world. And so uh, we, we want to make train. sure that, uh, yeah, buy train. We want to make sure that, uh, you know, you got some flex play. And I think McMillan is a, it, he'll be a decent flex. I mean, Casey's a tough defense and it's at Casey. So that could be a tough play, but Baker's shown, man. I, I mean, the other, Can't the be other discussion point that you said is uh, Baker is. Uh, I know we have all this talk for Goff as an MVP, but I don't know. Let's see if Baker can keep uh, Tampa going. Let's see what happens. So, yeah, yeah, no. having having flex on the buy train. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got to get off the Schneid when you're on the buy train. Watch out, out for right the Schneid. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you know, just was checking in on some player values, checking in on some moves to make right here. Wanted to zoom in on some offenses and kind of look around. You know, if Jalen McMillan again is is out there, anybody wants to give me two, you know, I'd, I'd trade two thirds for McMillan right now. I might even potentially give you a two. I believe in McMillan a whole lot. I think this is yeah. a really, really good receiver. I do think he needs to be out of the slot as much as possible, especially in his first few years here um, to, to learn. Like, <laughs> like I let's uh i wanted to zoom in on on bo nicks real quick while while we're at it just just playing some some decent quarterback here over the last few weeks and i was just curious to see if what would be the swapping point for uh bo nicks you got those those points totals over the last three four weeks here for me jay wayne been pretty good 23 since week 5 23 22 14 30 yeah, crushed this past week. That's Carolina, obviously. Bunch you know, of rushing, a lot of lot of rushing, which the you know that's obviously you know gonna gonna be a big part of the upside. But you know, is there QB nine overall? 
Is there, you know, would you would you swap Bo Nix out for Baker Mayfield? I don't know, man. I, I think I would rather have Baker just because I feel more confident in his future. I know you, that sounds just, bad. Is, is it because he went to Oregon? Mm. Yes, that's a little bit of it. No, it's just because of Sean Payton. I, I don't know how long. I mean, obviously Denver's playing pretty well. Uh, they'll they'll continue on, but if Sean Payton leaves, uh, they have the next so, quarterback. so much money that they can't spend. Like there was a graphic about <laughs> how much the average league, the league average is spent on all the different skill position players, and like all of the Broncos was like in half. Like yeah. they have no money because Russell Wilson's capped them so bad yeah. that they shouldn't be doing what they're doing and as successful successful as they are. Well, that, that would be with that, what the money they have to work with, which is crazy. Like that would be my kind of point there is is because I want to be a hater on Sean Payton. I don't want to give him his too, credit, but, I mean, but it's we, I got to like we like Bo Nix fit for this for the system and the mm -hmm. scheme. And and while watching it, you know, he's not hitting everything he needs to hit. And, and I think he needs to keep Cortland as involved as possible. And they need to be getting Troy Franklin involved and Mims involved. And you know that he's just he's not working with a whole lot as my is, is really the whole the whole point right. I was getting to. Um, obviously a lot of college experience for him. So you like to come in here and see him to do that and and hey, we're gonna make it easy on me. I'm gonna I'm gonna run when I can. Um and the and the running ability is on on full display. Uh, so I was just curious to see if, if you know, where where the line would be where, you know, you would take Bo Nix uh, and, and be able to swap him out for somebody else. Like, I mean, if you could swap, would you take Jared Goff, right? You already said you would take Baker, right, over over Nix. I, I said it'd be close. I think I think I would probably take Baker in that scenario. Um, but I mean, it's it's almost a coin flip for me. It's uh, so Bo Nix is definitely growing on me. I think I, think I would about take Trevor here. I mean, I would um, take Trevor Lawrence all day. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence over really, Nick for, for sure. Um, I, take, I think. I, I mean, up until me. this last week, I mean, I, I would have, I would have sent Nick's for Herbert. You know, I think. Um, I, I don't. Yeah, see I that on here, but I, I saw a trade where it was like Nick's and something small for Herbert. I, 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 I was upset that I didn't offer that, but, <laughs> but it, you know, from a fantasy perspective, he's got to be in the top third. I, I haven't redid my ranking since August, mm -hmm. but I, I got to imagine just from a fantasy perspective, he's got to be in that top third by now. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've been liking the football that Lawrence has been playing over the last few weeks. I trust Trevor. Yeah. Uh, I've seen enough from him that I, you know, I've seen the yeah. bad and the good. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to still stick with, with Trevor there, but it's definitely way closer than, you know, I think by default, I just answer Nick or uh, Lawrence there. But um, I think a lot of people would probably say Bo Nix. Give me Bo Nix. Um, yeah, I think I think most people probably would at this point, uh, just because, you know, Lawrence, you know, didn't turn water into wine. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think I would switch him out for I see that Drake May. Was that Wandell, Drake May and Josh Downs for for Nix? Uh, we, uh, give me Drake May side. So I would I would for sure rather have may than nick so if i could make that swap one for one or add a little bit to it i'd rather yeah. go on the may side for me same personally. same uh the may side for me jalen daniels obviously jalen daniels bo nicks and a first i mean bo nicks and a first for jalen daniels i think i'd still take the daniels side mm -hmm. yeah for sure i just wanted to see where his value was i was kind of curious he's been he's been playing oh, you know there's the, one i would do right there you're on it boom i would do that all day plus tuesday morning yeah i think that's a great a great call to get swap out sammy d for for nicks if you can yeah i guess uh, we should so. say it since uh if you're not watching this on the tube sam darnold for for bo nicks i would i would definitely right, that's go a, that's, uh, a, that's a real then. solid move right there mostly if you're watching nicks play the fantasy output maybe doesn't match what you what you think of it uh, yeah, because it's not it's not like it's this better. insane fantasy play or this insane quarterback play from him. But again, a rookie in a situation that isn't stellar, uh, but a, but a, a coach that has had a decent track record with getting a QB to uh, play at a really high level. And I think this is a good fit. So I uh, just wanted to kind of check that out. Uh, and then and then on the way out here, I wanted to give Jacoby Myers a little love. I think I think he's a nice little move to make right now if you need some yeah. some cheap production Jawan yeah. Jennings right now mm -hmm. I don't know how much he costs you but I mean they got Ricky Pierce all and they're going to get him up to speed but Jawan should get healthy through this bye and he's been great out there Ayuk's out for the foreseeable future that play could even extend into maybe some of next year if Ayuk misses any time and we've seen some really good play I think Jennings could be huge down the stretch for your fantasy team 
there's some rumors of Deontay Johnson being traded. Jalen Coker on the Panthers. Uh, I think it was Holy Cross, maybe. Uh, had, a, had a nice game in this last game for Carolina. If Deontay gets traded out of there, even if he doesn't, if he's not, if he's available, Adam. Yeah. And then Boutte was out there. He's made a couple grabs, a couple plays to <laughs> through this year. So, you know, just, just keep an, keep an eye on those guys, but Juwan Jennings would be, you know, two, I said two third, you know, that he had that one crazy game and then yeah. been out and injured. So, uh, you know, two thirds, get it done. Maybe, maybe even a two, three swap. It might be a little egregious for him. Cause I don't know how much play you're going to get uh, kind of moving forward unless they do move Debo or something in the off season, but anything can give up the two kind of happen there. Probably wouldn't give up the two, but <clears throat> see what I could do for, for Jennings. I think that's a good contender. Uh, I'm, I'm also up. interested, and, and I don't know how much it's going to be. But this would be really cheap. Is Parker Washington? Great call, um, big deal. I, I've, I've liked him quite a bit, and with um, with the Kirk injury, and then with uh, the bacon lettuce tomato going on, um, Brian going Thomas on a little, is potentially sorry, missing Brian time Thomas, as well. I shouldn't say that. Way. Yeah, well, Brian Thomas going off. I, I, I think Parker may get some more play. I think he was at 74, yeah, 74 percent snap this um, this last game, and uh, I, obviously, I think that's going to go up just with. Um, you know, he, he didn't produce, it was only like six points off four targets, but, um, but again, he's, he's got that yard per, uh, you know, he's kind of the, the speedster type of guy. And I think he could be a great flex play for you. Yeah. You've seen him make an impact on punt return. You've seen him make an impact even last year as a rookie. I I think that's a great call, uh, with both of those guys going down. Uh, so, you know, the Trevor, the dip, the dip on Trevor might be even better soon. Matt Mm -hmm. Foreman, how they just got movement. Oh yeah. All right. Well, he's big D. I'm Casey. That's Jay Waynes. We're the FFD. We appreciate you. Be sure to uh, like, subscribe, comment below. You can hit us with a $5 holler over on the uh, Patreon side of things. Get into that paid Discord. There's also a free Discord that you can hop in. Uh, We will be doing getting back to the roster reviews here soon. We're about to redo the uh, Patreon for your pleasure, so you can get in there and get your rosters reviewed. I'm going to do a little new tier action for your pleasure. Uh, And make sure you tune into the next show because we're going to start the rebuilding train this week. And then we'll be talking rebuilds uh, from here on out. So that's that's exciting. So get off the schneid and on the buy train. We'll have to go into the community to get some rebuilds because not not in our community. We have we got a lot of league winners in our community. That's right. But we're going to find some uh, some rebuilders in that in that Twitter verse out there. So, yeah. All right. Maybe with that five star review, dog. Appreciate you. Peace. Peace.